Heavenly Father, we want to begin um, binding off the last six verses of Daniel 11 in connection with Raphia and Paneum. Uh, it'll take some time to do so, but more importantly, it'll take your direction to do it in a in a clear and concise way. So we ask that you grant us the presence of your Holy Spirit as we begin to work through this material. And we ask that uh, you pour your latter rain out through uh, this message and prepare the hearts and minds of those that would follow these things wherever they might be. Bless us this day in our study, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I still don't want to get too, <clears throat> too in-depth with this. Okay, with March 27th, but um, Theodore evidently watched yesterday, and he sent me an, um, an email, and it's, it's a big, big email with some charts and stuff, and I'm not going to go through it all, I'm just going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to refer to the beginning March 27th. That was the one when, when I watched what he did, what I was curious about in this chiasm of March 27th, what would be the starting point? Because this 100 days of prayer that the Adventist Church initiated, you know when it ends, right? It ends on July 4th. <laughs> so it ends on um, Independence Day. Right at the point in time, probably... Before July 18th. Yeah, exactly. right, at, right at the point in time where the independence of the United States is about ready to come to a conclusion because you know it, it, it's obvious anyone would understand it that when Nashville gets hit by a nuclear bomb uh, we're going into a martial law situation and independence is over. Um, okay so He's, he, Theodore has tracked where, where I was at in this history. What I was doing is I was coming in, as I was going into retirement. If you remember, I went into retirement for five months. Um, and nothing was planned there. Um, and we came out of retirement on September 7th, so to speak. And then we found out it was five months, five months in hiding. And it was going on right when they were having their German prophecy school, right in the place in Germany where Luther had went into hiding, and Luther came out of hiding because of fanaticism in his history. So there was a, a, some interesting parallels going on there. But I'll cut into this, um, into this email here. He says, in the case of March 27th, 2019, he says, I know of no event that occurred on that date. I do know it is a couple of days prior to the start of the Future for America Spring Camp meeting in which you pass the torch to Parminder. Mm -hmm. The school of the prophet's presentation for that day is the shut door. So at the school of the prophets on March 27th, what we studied was the shut door. Um, the next day, the last School of the Prophets presentation you did prior to September 2019 was, now he's saying the last presentation here um, prior to September 7th was on 1863. Okay, and, and that's significant too because 1863 is a, a symbol of the rebellion of Parminder among other things. And of course, that's where they close their door. But, but here's what I want you to see. After we did a presentation here, um, as, as I recall, we went to California and did the final presentation that we did. Um, and it, and he said, you then presented from March 31st to April 8th. April 9, Gregorian is... March 27th, Julian. So we ended our presentations on March 27th, uh, March 26th, if you're following, in the Julian. So this is Mark, this is marking both the last presentation on the regular Gregorian calendar was the shut door, 
And then we went ahead and we did some more presentations, I believe in California, at the beginning of April. And on the Julian, we ended on March 26th, which meant the door was shut on March 27th for this message from, from here, I guess is what it means. And then of course, five months later, is September 7th. So, what I'm saying, whatever it is, I looked the other day when I first seen Theodore's presentation, I don't know that I can look as, as good as some people look, but I looked the web, searched the web, you punch in you know, what happened on this date, and I looked and I looked, there was nothing that I could see that would be prof a prophetic event. But I think what, what Theodore has come across is he's tying the work of this message and movement into here because it's this message and this movement that has the message for Adventism and this is the message, this is the chiasm of the Levites, if you could say it that way. Okay, so um, you, were, you were in retirement from April 9th Gregorian which is March 27th, Julian, to September 7th. Gregorian. That March 27th is exactly halfway between October 13th. This here is halfway between October 13th, which is where we get the midnight cry message where Theodore identifies November 9th to give the second witness to what Tess had predicted, okay? October 13th takes you to here and let me read it so I got it straight. Um, where was I? You, that March 27th is exactly halfway between October 13th, 2018 and September 7th, 2019. So it makes this the point is, if you're following, uh, but this is September 7, 9, 7, 2019. And over here on 10, is it, it's 10 October? Yeah, 10, 13, 2018. This is a chiastic structure here, and the dead center is this March 27th. And this is where Theodore at the Lambert Church, based upon the sermon at noon, calculated how many days until November 9th, okay? And by confirming November 9th through the chronology, Tess had put November ninth in the record, what was it, on the, the third? So this was the second witness to November 9th, and uh, we're not worried about Tess being the first witness because we acknowledged yesterday that Tess and Parminder have put some genuine waymarks in the mix, it's just that they corrupt them. It was like Satan was in, in advance trying to destroy our ability to really understand what they meant, yes. I don't understand how the 10-13-2018 is a chiastic for 9-7-2019. What do you mean you don't understand? Well, usually a chiastic structure would have the 10 and the 13 over there as well. No, not necessarily. No, the number of no. no this, this, the, he, Theodore don't even address that. What he's saying is from 10-13 when the second witness to November 9th was put in the public record and to September 7th, the dead center of that history is March 27th. So you could have, you could have something over here that paralleled this, but you don't need it. Your chiastic structure is this is the first way mark, this is the last. And therefore, this March 27th, um, when I went into retirement, Okay, in the Julian, March 27th, or in the Gregorian, the last presentation, the, the presentation I did was on the shut door, okay? So the door's shut, we're in retirement. Um, five months later, 
in hiding we come out this this is a chiastic structure about this message this movement and this message and this movement is the message and movement that's going to speak to the Levites and this here begins a chiastic structure for the Levites that goes from here to here to here so there's and there and the the meaning, the theme of both chiastic structures are tied together. Okay, we're, we're, this message, this movement is the messenger that's going to give this message of 718 days, or 731 days, I'm sorry, um, which is July 18th. And uh, on this day, the center of it, the Adventist Church begins a hundred days of prayer that ends on July 4th. Independence Day. Right at, you'd have to go back to 1776, beginning, end. Independence is about to be taken away. So to speak. I mean, it's... What's the amount of time between October 13th, 2018 and September 7th, 2019? Someone got a way to calculate that? I, I might have it right here. Uh, I'm, I didn't look too close at... He, he sent me several charts. I might have it, but you can look. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm, I hope I'm okay. I'm not. I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at something else. He says um, the March twenty seventh here is halfway between ten thirteen and. September 7th, so it's chiastic structure. And then he says, as you presented this morning, the 252 days from July 18th, 2020, right here, this 252 days, Mark, how many? 329. So this is 329 total? Okay, so as you presented the, the yesterday, is what he's saying, the 252 days from here to here uh, marks the start of a period of 273 days that ends on December 25th, creating, uh, yeah, I wanted to get this, there's a word for it, I, we were looking for a word, a word. It creates a chiral. Remember yesterday I'm saying that the, it inverted? Okay, the, the actual, there is a word for it called a chiro. Okay, so the, what it would be is 252, and then this 525, it's 252525 is a chiro. Okay, uh, so it, it's, that's no big deal. It just is a, a term, a mathematical term. 12 to 25, not 12.5, the last one? This here? Yeah. Yes, it should be. Okay. Okay, so I brought up, you brought up, he says, I brought this up because I looked it up. I went home. I knew roughly, because I remember having a discussion out the back door here with a couple students that were here at this time about what I had discovered about Paneum. And I knew I was on my way to the airport and I went to Canada and it was there that I presented Paneum. So I knew that the first time I presented Paneum was in Canada. And I asked 
the class here, so the people here, when was that particular trimester? And it was January, February, March 2017. So, so the other day I went into my passport, my old passport, and checked when I cleared customs in Edmonton. And I, I got there on a Thursday, and that's the way I would do the camp meetings in Canada, is I'd go halfway through. So I knew that they gave, I remembered they gave me a big Sabbath day. On Sabbath is where I was reaching my conclusion from Thursday and Friday, so I calculated it out. It was on January 14th, 2017, that I presented Paneum for the first time. And I mean, I presented everything, I, I, not everything, but it, it was a big study, all right? It was big. And you brought, so here's his comment on that. You brought up January 14th, 2017. This was the Sabbath in Alberta at the Glen Park Hall near Warburg, where you presented Rafi and Pinium. It is 1,533 days from that date to March 27th, 2021. From here back to when Paneum was first mentioned in 2017, is 1,533 days. <laughs> you know, who, who was planning these trips? It's like, we, we were putting some serious energy in going back to Africa. And we could see the doors closing, so we, we switched and we said, well, maybe we're, we'll go to South America and in the interim time and before we could even think about going to South America, everything's shutting down. And now we realize, Kathy and I on the way here, we're just listening to the news and it was some person that's been stuck in Peru, an American, um, and there's only 37 ventilators in Peru, she's saying, and they're probably all in Lima, the capital, and she was in another city. And they're in, in a martial law situation. They can only go out and go to the store, the pharmacy, and one other place. Hospital. Hospital. Okay, just those three places. And if, you, and if you're an American walking on the streets and they're coming up and you're, they're, ask, they're questioning you. If, you, you got, if you're looking Latin, maybe you can walk around a little bit. So I, what I'm saying, what I'm saying this for is it's clear as we looked at our efforts to go back to Africa right away and then switch gears and go to South America, it was clear the Lord shut that all down where we would be here mm -hmm. to continue presenting this message rather than have some of us trapped in some foreign country. The point being is, is that it wasn't a plan that over here, January... 14th, 2017 was the first time we presented Paneum and that from here to here is 1,533 days. I mean, that, that just... I see that the Lord is merciful in that He... <clears throat> He allowed this group here originally to come to grips with the idea that the camp meetings were all prophetic and they were large chunks. You know, we agreed that those camp meetings that led up had prophetic dates, they had times, the international camp meetings at 9 11. Mm -hmm. So we first agreed that we thought that was the hand of the Lord. And that's a pretty broad scale. And so now when he brings us down to this, which is a really, in my mind, minutia scale. He's telling us, you've already agreed with me to my broad strokes, so now you have to take the next step. Because for me, some of these dates in here, I'm thinking, no, but I've already agreed that the broad strokes of those camp meetings and those times were um, divine. So when I don't understand March 27th, 2021, I'm just going to go back and say, but I did understand the timing of the camp meetings, so I'll take it by faith. Well, Theodore don't usually send me links to his presentations. I guess he's probably doing these online classes on a regular basis. But he said, audience, when you were listening to, they would pan out to the audience. Yeah, yeah. He, so he's been doing them for a while. So, but I watched this one he sent me, and I think it's probably the only one he ever sent me. And I, as I said yesterday, I'm not going to try to explain everything that he was teaching, because I don't, I, I never grasp everything that Theodore's 
saying, especially the first time through. But what I saw, what, what, what got me searching the internet, is I seen this chiastic structure and of, from here to this, March 27th, it's, it, that, it seems kind of logical that if you go two years, the center would be March 27th. That doesn't seem that phenomenal. But it is. When you look at the, the days of the years, it doesn't happen all the time. And this includes a leap year, which even complicates it more. So the fact that the dead center is a March 27th. But then when you, when we're, you realize that March 27th is the 27th of March, 27, 273, and it's connecting over here. And then when you see that on the Julian, it's July 31st, but it, it equates to 718 here, July 18th. I knew there was, I knew there was something profound in that and but what I couldn't figure out was this here I, I wanted to see the Jesus illustrates the end from the beginning so I started digging for a historical event of, at the beginning of the chiastic structure this one here this is pretty profound that the Adventist church calls for a hundred days of prayer and it ends on July 4th okay that's pretty profound um, but now that that this is in the mix that in the Gregorian on this date what I was presenting was the shut door. Okay, <laughs> that's what this story is about: is the shut door, and then uh, on the 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 uh, Julian on the twenty sixth, I think it is the twenty sixth, the day before. That's when I ended speaking and go into retirement. Door shut. Okay, so the now I can see that this waymark speaks to this because. Before we're going to be allowed, let me, let me show you what I mean. Go to Jeremiah 15. Uh, maybe I, I can show you what I mean. Um, and then we've got to get, i got to get focused on our notes. Um, 30, 15. Jeremiah 30, I think. Okay, it's not that. Jeremiah, maybe it is 15 and I looked over it. Okay, it is, it's Jeremiah 15, I'm sorry. In, in verse 16, the, thy words were found and I did eat them, and thy words was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I'm called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. We've applied this to Millerite history and our history. We're reading the little book at 9-11 or 1840 if you're a Millerite. And this is verse 16 is one of the places we emphasize that when you eat the little book you enter into a covenant relationship. Because 9-11 because you're, you're called by his name at that point. There's a separation in verse 17. I sat not in the assembly of mockers, nor rejoiced. I sat alone because of thy hand. Okay. Um, the separation in the Millerite history because of his hand. His hand covered the mistake in the fullness of the year. Understanding of the charts until he removed his hand. That would be Raphi and Paneum for us. And when it's removed, it, it's marking the disappointment associated with it. For thou hast filled me with indignation, verse 18, why is my pain perpetual and my wound incurable, which refuses to be healed? Wilt thou be all, uh, altogether unto me as a liar and as waters that fell? The vision, though the vision tarry, wait for it, it shall not lie. Okay, therefore thus saith the Lord, and this is the point I'm getting to, it's verse 19. If thou return, then will I bring thee again, and thou shalt stand before me. And if thou take forth the precious from the vial, thou shalt be as my mouth. Let them return unto thee, but return not unto them. And I will make thee unto this people a fenced brazen wall, and they shall fight against thee, but thou sh they shall not prevail against thee, for I am with thee to save thee and to deliver thee, saith the Lord, and I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. The wise and the wicked are separated after a 
after a testing process. So what I'm saying is right here, if you were going to be faithful, if you were going to be his mouth to give this message to the Levites and thereafter to the Nethanims, you go through a testing process first, where the wise and the wicked will be manifested. And this testing process, door shut, it begins here. Here, the Omega movement has manifested its uh, visual manifestation. It's, it's putting on pants, okay? Um, now, the question is, are we going to be faithful and return unto Him? And if we are, then we get to be the voice. So what I'm saying is this whole process that we're identifying here, this is a process that we've dealt with repeatedly in Jeremiah and other passages. This is the binding off of the wicked and the wise. But it's, it's neat there that in that final verse in uh, Jeremiah 15, and what verse is that? Verse 21, that it's, the wicked are, are divided into two classes, so to speak. I'll deliver you from the hand of the wicked. Okay, that's, that's Daniel 12. The wise and the wicked are, are portrayed in Daniel 12. But the, the terrible, who's the terrible? Rome. Okay, and the wicked are Rome. The wicked are Rome. About November 9th, we're actually taking the precious from the vial. We're taking the precious bits of truth from that vial. Yeah, right. amen. Yeah, that's, really? that's, this, uh -huh. that's this history here. Now we're in here, okay? So, um, anyway, that's March 27th, and it's pretty profound. Let's go to... Um, so can I ask one other question? Yeah. You have March 27th retirement. You have March 27th 100 day of prayer. So then when you go down to March 27th, 2021, does it have to do with a retirement, a national day of prayer? Are we applying these things that are happening to the upcoming event? Okay, that's it. It just passed, right? No. Yeah, well, I, 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 I can answer a little bit, that's but I'm not sure. Right? That's unresolved in my mind. Here is where the Levites begin to come in, but this seems to be really emphasizing that this is where they're coming in. So, um, I don't know what, what the implications of that are. This is where they're gathered, I guess, before this door closes. Um, I have a thought on that, but I'm not going to go there. Um, about the number eight. We'll get to there at some point in time, Lord willing. Okay, so that's what, that's Theodore's comments, but this here just, this isn't that big of a deal, I don't think, but when you have 252525, 252525, five, it's not inverted, it's a chiral, whatever that means. Okay. Um, Okay. The chiro is asymmetric in such a way that the structure and its mirror image are not superimposable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? They're not superimposable. Okay. Yeah, we, we would go into a definition pit there, looking at words, no doubt. What? Nothing? Um, go with me, if you would, to um, Daniel 10. The, Daniel 10, we taught for years and years and years. And we grappled with it. We learned stuff about it. It kept, continued to unfold. But uh, there was always a, a problem in Daniel 10 for me that I, I personally, I could teach Daniel 10 but there was a problem in verse 1 that, that I never could resolve for myself. So I want to show you that problem. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. Now, we took time to show that this word thing um, is 
also translated in Daniel as matter. We, went, we, we would run down this whole uh, verse. But the problem I had, if you don't see it, is the first thing, the rule of first mention, the first thing you're told is Daniel understands it. He understands both. And we would break this down, um, he, that he, he understood both the Mare and the Chao Zone vision. And we're going to stand on our de definition of the Mare and the Ta Chao Zone vision. Not the reinvented Catholic definition that Parminder inserted. We're going to stick with the fact that the Mare is the, the vision of Christ in the most holy place. The snapshot, the singular vision. And the Chao Zone is the complete prophetic vision. Okay, That's how we always taught it till it started getting undermined. But here it says he has understanding of them all, and I never could, could figure out why when you move on in chapter 10, that things are being revealed to him if he already understood everything. I mean, if you think about it, there's kind of a, if he already has understanding of everything, what's, what is, what can be revealed? Now I understand. What it's saying is, what, what we understood about the foundations of this message and what we understood about Daniel 11, 40-45 was correct and true. Uh, even, even what we taught about the Soviet Union was correct and true. We were supposed to teach that the same way that, I mean, why didn't the Millerites see the fullness of your mistake? Why didn't they catch that? Why didn't Miller see the fullness of the year? You all know it. The Lord held his hand. Okay, he, he, Miller was prevented from seeing that. We were prevented from recognizing the distinction between the Soviet Union and Russia. Therefore, at that level, we had understanding of the vision. But we didn't understand that the Lord was going to open up greater light. I mean, we just didn't understand it. And now you can see that. And when's he going to open up the greater light based upon Daniel 10? At midnight, right? Yep. How many witnesses do you have for, wit for Daniel 10 being opened up at midnight in Daniel 10? All right, how many verses are there? How many days was he fasting? 21. How many days was Gabriel struggling with Cyrus? 21. Okay, so you got three witnesses in there internally that this takes place at midnight. At the end of the 21. At the end of the 21 days. Okay, and when was the end of the 21 days for us? September 7th. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe September 7th and, and November... 11th, is it November 11th? January. November 9th. Oh. November 9th, maybe September and November 9th, they're both midnight, maybe they need to be considered at one level as one way mark because midnight for us is November 9th. Isn't it? Why would I say midnight is November 9th and, and pass over September 7th? Why is November 9th, midnight. Keep your finger, not because of Elijah, keep your finger in Daniel 10 and go to Ezekiel chapter 1. It says, Now it came to pass in the 30th year. In what year? The 30th year in the 4th month, in the 5th day of the month. In 1844, what was the fifth day of the fourth month? July 21st. July 21st. So what was that? Midway. Midway between, when they first thought the Lord would appear, and thereafter they found He would appear. It was midnight. Okay, so Ezekiel 1.1. 1, 1, there's a doubling there, right? Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river Chabar, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. So when does Ezekiel see the visions of God? At midnight in the 30th year. What's the 30th year for this movement? November 9th. What was, Jesus illustrates the end from the beginning. 
what was the beginning? 1989, what day? November 9th, what time? Midnight. The wall comes down at midnight, November 9th. So, I mean, it's historical events are set before the people in prophecy scene. We've got historical events that are saying our midnight, our 21, was November 9th, uh, 2019. And it's the 30th year. So, if you go back to Daniel chapter 10... Verse 2 says, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Twenty-one days. He already has understanding of the vision. He, he already knows Daniel eleven forty to 45 I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hittical, then I lifted up mine eyes, and look, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. His body also was like beryl, and his face as the appearance. And what's the Hebrew word that's translated as appearance? Mari. Yeah. Appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. I, and I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. What takes place on November 9th? For the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. What's a quaking? Another word for quaking. The shaking. shaking. The shaking takes place on November 9th. Why? Because you've got wise and wicked in Daniel, right? And what have what the wicked said about November 9th? Wrong. Uh, wrong, 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 wrong. But they've, they've, over 20 predictions of Tess's failed on November 9th. And of course, all of your followers jump ship, right? None of them. None of them. Okay, but the separation okay. took place there. And Daniel alone saw the vision. What vision? The vision of Ezekiel. The vision of John. Okay, so... Therefore I was left alone. I saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption and I retained no strength yet I heard the voice of his words and when I heard the voice of his words then I was in a deep sleep on my face and my face toward the ground and behold a hand touched me which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hand and he said unto me O Daniel man greatly beloved understand the words that I speak to thee and stand upright for unto thee I am now sent and when he had spoken this word unto me I stood trembling then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come forth for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in twenty days. There's the twenty-one again. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days, that's the purpose of Daniel 11. It's about God's people at the end of, the t end of time. Um, for yet the vision is for many days, and when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face toward the ground and became dumb. And behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. What touch is that? Well, it's a second touch. How many times is he going to get touched? Three. Three times. Then I opened my mouth, but here's the point. We used, to, we used to grapple with when the touches were. The touches are beginning at midnight, November 9th. You're being brought into a voice for, the voice for the Lord. So where are they now, July and December? Where are what? The, the touches. touches. You're getting November, July. December. Or is it an internal, not an external touch? No, it, no, 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 no. The, the, the three touches here are <clears throat> awake. Well, let, let's just read on. It, it, the answer's in here. Um, 
where, where, where was I? Uh, verse 16. And behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips second time. Then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that stood before me, O my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me and I have retained no strength. For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? There's a doubling for you. For as for me, straightway there remained no strength in me, neither is there breath left into me. Then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. There's the third touch. And he said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. Wouldn't that third touch be July 18th? No. For, and for I don't think so. For the... For the... What's the Levites, the Nethanims, and what's the other one? Priest. Priest. For the priest. I think it's broken up into three with the priests, the Levites, and the Nethanims. Mm -hmm. This isn't about that. This is about Daniel representing those people at midnight that wake up and understand a message. A message that in verse 1, they, they already understood, but now there's greater light given to them. It's about a message, and that's why when it says, be strong, be strong, it's marking the midnight cry. They now have the clarity on the midnight cry message. And it, the, the threefold division of the priests, the Levites, and the Nethanims is 1533. I some point in time when you get raised up it's because you've come face down and then you and then Jesus raises you up and as an ensign as an ensign and that would be July okay but that, I don't think he's being lifted up as an ensign here he's being he's given the message here I'm open for correction he's he's let's read on it oh man greatly that beloved message is what is what changes the people. The ensign, the ensign, you, you can't, it doesn't change the people until the prophecy is fulfilled. Right. What do you mean, right? I agree. Okay, so even if you, you have to have the message first, and then when the prophecy is fulfilled, the ensign is lifted up. The, P the Levites are listening to, maybe, maybe some of them are listening to the message, but they're, they're, not, they're not believing it yet. They believe it when it's fulfilled. That's when it becomes an ensign. How, when, when did it become the ensign in the story of Elijah? When the fire came down. When the fire came down. Okay, you've got, you got to get to the point where the fire comes down, then it's an ensign. That's July 18. Yes. But he's not at July 18th. He's, get, he's being instructed in the message of July 18th right here. That's what he's being instructed with. Be strong, yea, be strong. It's the midnight cry message. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Then said he, Knowest thou... Wherefore I come unto thee, and now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia, and when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grisha shall come. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael your prince. So what's he doing in the last verse there, in verse 21? I'm showing you what is noted in the scripture of truth. He's opening the midnight cry message up to him at that point in time. You have to have it opened up to you before you proclaim it. And I argue it was opened up at a certain point in time. What was that point in time? It was the end of a chiastic structure that began on September 7th. The center of that chiastic stru structure was November 9th and the end of it was January 11th. In 11? 11 in this room. Um, that's where all the lights came on. So, um, 15 minutes left. The notes that are the 220, 46, and 3, let's go there.
if we understand that, uh, how long have we been in midnight? I guess would be the question. A long time. A long time. When, we were, when, we, when did we get into midnight? Yeah, you just said November. Yeah, I'm marking that as a point in time. But midnight is also a period of time, isn't it? The discussion of midnight was all the way back to the soldier. Yeah, that's my point. Is it, it, mid, what, what is associated with midnight? Point in the period. The midnight cry. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you got to be in midnight to, to justify the message of the midnight cry. So, when did the message of the midnight cry begin to be opened up? Back in 2013 or 14 with the introduction of Ezra 7-9. So at one level, we've been in midnight for years. Okay, the midnight cry message is being developed. Now, Samuel Snow, he begins developing his midnight cry message and he doesn't get to midnight on July 21st until long after. So he wasn't really in midnight. So maybe we weren't really in midnight at 2014, but you're getting my point, right? But what I'm saying is, is it valid, let me say it this way, is it valid to identify that on September 7th, that's 9-7, that 63 days later is November 9th? Is that a, a valid prophetic observation? Yes, okay, you have, do, how many witnesses do you have to 9-7 being a waymark? You have the 97, 9,700 of Gideon's. You have 977 with uh, Jeroboam's uh, feast, counterfeit feast. You have 97 in our history. Isn't there another one that's not popping in my mind? That's enough. Okay, and what's 9 times 7? 63, and 63 takes you to November 9th. Okay, so maybe it's just a 63 line, but I'm arguing that it's a chiasm. You follow me? Yes? yes. And that 63 days takes you to January 11th. And on January 11th, the lights come on on these lines. Okay, so I'm saying this is a chiastic structure. Therefore, I'm arguing if the center of that chiastic structure is the 30 years of Ezekiel 1.1, that this whole chiasm is, is midnight. It's, it's a illustration of midnight. And therefore, the first touch is 9-7. The second touch is November 9th. And the final touch is January 11th. And on January 11th, the message is open up. Be strong, be strong. This is the message. Okay, so that's, that's my logic. Anyone want to question or? January 11th, 2021? No, no. This year. Oh, this year. This year. Okay. 63, January, 63 days after. Okay. September 7th is 9-7. November 9th. And January 11th. 63. 63. Okay, chiastic structure. Midnight. One touch. Second touch. Third touch. Be strong, be strong. And what's, what's the message, what is the message that's opened up? Among other things, it's what shall befall thy people in the latter days. Yes? And I think to add emphasis to those three touches is in Daniel 10, uh, 18 and 19, it says strengthen three times. It says yep. in 18. Once and then he, he strengthened twice. me, has, has strengthened, strengthened me, yeah. was strengthened, and has strengthened is 19. Yeah. Was strengthened and has strengthened. Yeah. Right. Three strengthenings. And then when you get there, you're be strong, be strong. Um, and there may be other things in there that were 
we're missing. But I'm saying that's midnight. But this here is a point in time. This is midnight. Go ahead. And I have another question. I have another question in regards to uh, verse 4 of Daniel 10. And it says, And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, is that three days after the three full weeks? Mm -hmm. That's the twenty-first day of his fast. <coughs> yeah, but I'm saying is the, is the verse 4, and it says in three days, then he began to get the vision. Uh, I don't know, that's what I'm asking. No, he's in the 24th day of the first, first month, month when he gets the vision. So oh, he began oh, fasting on the oh, third day. day of okay. the first month. Okay. okay. And he fasted for 21 days. Okay. I, I so he gets the vision on the... I've often wondered, on the 4 and 20th day of the first month. Yeah. I don't know. Anyone? Theodore. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> Pardon me? Which touch is verse 10? Verse 10 is the first touch. That's the first one? Yep, 10-10. Ten, ten. Yeah, it's a double, but it's also that they were, they were praying. He was praying. That would be... Uh, he was Sabbath. He was praying. He was on his knees. Yeah. He was actually sleeping. No, it says he was... On his knees and his hands. Like, on his knees and his hands. He's, mm -hmm. he's praying... He was asleep until nine seven, and the first. No, if that was the it, first one, then it, it was it was praying because it was Sabbath. Yeah, but what she's saying is that I get what she was saying. No, verse nine is you're on a, in a deep sleep until that first touch. Yeah, it brings you up. But you and I, I, then at that first touch at nine eleven, you're praying. You're dead because the sleep is a type of a death. Mm -hmm. So you're dead in verse nine, and then you wake up in verse ten. You're resurrected. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Yep. They're all three Sabbaths. Um, whatever. The Daniel was speaking on 111. Who was? Daniel was, I believe. Yes. Daniel was speaking on 111. Yep. Yeah. That's interesting too. The book of Daniel was speaking on 111. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's just do one other thing uh, to bring this to a close. On your notes from yesterday on page 2, um, dealing with 1533. 1533 is a symbol of a glorious manifestation of the power of God. And I, you know, you just gotta wonder, in here, when you get to here at the end of this 1533, that would mean that from back here on January 14th, 2017 to here, that at one level this is 1533 BC, at another level it is 1840 to 1844. But right here, it would, it would be speaking that there's a closed door here. I, 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 anyway, I can't go there. I, I don't have it figured out. But what I want to show us, remind us of, we've already looked at this, is 1533 is a symbol of a glorious manifestation of the power of God. But in the center of page 2, where it says 1533 equals 333 slash hour, 1533 is a symbol of a third. How many thirds are there? This is speaking to what you're talking about earlier. How many thirds are there? In the Bible? There are three, okay? <laughs> That's a bad question, no doubt about it. There's three thirds. Okay, it, but they're all a glorious manifestation of the power of God. So, what I'm saying is, they're this here, this way mark, this way mark, and this way mark represent closed doors. Okay, this, and they're all, and they're all, they have several witnesses to put them together. This is the universal Sunday law, when Michael stands up. 
Um, this is the Sunday law of Daniel 11, verse 41 in the United States. And this is the first Sunday law when the image of the beast test begins in the United States. The, this is the midnight cry. This is what we call the loud cry, but it's also just a repeat of the midnight cry. And this would be the midnight cry, seven last plagues. Different type of cry, but still a cry. Um, what I'm saying is, from somewhere back here to here, this is a glorious manifestation of the power of God. October 22nd, 1844 is the end of 1,533 days, isn't it? Yes. What happened on October 22nd, 1844? A closed door, okay? Door closed. Door closed. Door closed. So this here is 1533. This is 1533. And this is 1533. Why? Because it's a third. And we're dealing with three manifestations of the power of God. Right? Okay, this is the priest, Levites, Nethanims. That's why uh, this is... Uh, I, have, I was already recognizing this, but I was uncertain where to put the starting point for this one, for the priests. Maybe 9-11 is the best place to put it. Um, but this over here, with this 1533 in here, it, it gives you pause. So Daniel's three touches, each one of those is a third of a touch. The, the gospel, the three-step gospels. All, yeah, all maybe it's, it may, this is what she was trying to say, okay? <laughs> Maybe there's a touch for the priests, a touch for the Levites, and a touch for the Nethanims, and it strengthens you for the great time of trouble, all right? But that's, the symbols have more than one meaning. What Daniel 10 is primarily teaching is what shall befall our people in the latter days, and you could say, well, that's the seven last plagues time period. But he's given a message. Plagues don't befall thy people, though. What's that? The plagues don't befall thy people. No, but in the time period of the plagues, what befalls thy people is they go into the time of Jacob's trouble and their earthliness is removed. So there is a, and they're going to hear God's covenant pronounced. There is a story of the, so it may work both ways, but we're not approaching it that way at this point. That, that could be the three touches. Um, so I wanted to put that in the record. And... In, on, in on page 3, the time or day of visitation. In the Bible, it talks about the time of God's visitation. Sometimes it's the God's visitation upon His people. Sometimes it's upon the wicked. But sometimes it calls it the time, and sometimes it calls it the, the day of visitation. And you can see this in the Great Controversy, it must be something significant. Why? You got, are you on page three of your notes? If you're on page three of your notes, that title up there is my title, Time or Day of Visitation. But what's the first thing we're told in the Great Controversy? Chapter one, the destruction of Jerusalem. Okay, and the first paragraph, she's quoting from Luke. If thou had known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes, for the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. What's that tell you? That's the very first reference in the book, The Great Controversy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the time of your visitation, based upon the rule of first mention, is 
absolutely essential to understand. If you don't understand it, you're lost. I mean, that's, that's the story of the time of thy visitation. The reason the Jews were lost is because they did not recognize the time of their visitation. And the first thing we're told in the Great Controversy is about the time of thy visitation. Okay. The book is about oftentimes the first section of the book is what the book's about. Yeah. yeah the first that, paragraph is supposed to do that for a chapter, but for an entire book, if you were a good writer, you could get it right there in yeah. the first. The, the, the yeah. One of the, oh, what's their names? There was a couple brothers in Adventism. Uh, it, it, they used to come visit our church, the one brother did. They were theologians and authors. Hardings. Oh. Leslie Harding and, forget the other Harding, maybe there was more than two brothers. But one of them came to our church in California one time and he gave a presentation on the spirit of prophecy. A good one, you know, an all day long presentation on Ellen White. Um, I liked his material. Um, but someone in Adventism went through the, the rules that you use to critique literary works. Okay? And he demonstrated, the person that dug it out, that the, the rules that make a book a classic book that stands through times, the rules that a good author actually uses, Ellen White used every one of them. And she used them in a divine way. There's no, there's no human authors that were as consistent with using those rules. So when you're talking about the rule is, is you're supposed to tell what the paragraph is in the first sentence, and the first paragraph is supposed to tell what the chapter is, and the first chapter is supposed to tell what the book is, that's a legitimate literary rule that people that are literary experts understand. And Ellen White has been identified, her writings, as the Cadillac of of those types of literary expressions. And here you have the very first thing in the book, which is the book for Adventism, is emphasizing the need to know the time of our visitation. Amen. Yes? There is a book called um, The Tale of Two Cities, and in its opening paragraph it Hislop. says, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. No, that's not his love. And that's Isn't the it? entire book. And he's Too considered one of the it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. And there goes the book, and that's in the opening paragraph of The Tale of Two Cities. Okay, so this is her opening, her opening statement. It's from Luke. But, and there's, so there's a much you could say about that, but I'm just trying to get, glean one little thing out of it, and it's, and it's this. If you could read on, Christ is, she's then going to talk about Christ weeping over Jerusalem. Um, in the next big paragraph that you have there, but I'm going to drop down some pages, still same chapter, and the bottom paragraph says, The majesty of heaven in tears. Because they didn't know the time of their visitation and respond accordingly, they're all going to be lost. Okay? He's crying over Jerusalem. The son of the infinite God, troubled in spirit, bowed down with anguish. The scene filled all heaven with wonder. That scene reveals to us the exceeding sinfulness of sin. It shows how hard a task it is, even for infinite power, to save the guilty from the consequences of transgressing the law of God. Jesus looking down to the last generation. Jesus looking down to this generation. Okay, Anyway, I, I want to come back to that before we close. Looking down to this last generation saw the world involved in a deception similar to that which caused the destruction of Jerusalem. The great sin of the Jews were their, was their rejection of Christ. The great sin of the Christian world would be their rejection of the law of God, the foundation of His government in heaven and earth. The great sin of Adventism would be in rejecting the foundational truths of the pioneers, and the great sin of this movement would be in rejecting the foundation of this movement, which was the Time of the End magazine. She didn't write those last two sentences, but that's the logic that you can plug in there. It's rejecting the foundation. The precepts of Jehovah would be despised and set at naught. Millions in bondage to sin, slaves of of Satan, doomed to suffer the second death, would refuse to listen to the words of truth in their day of visitation. And that's the minor point I wanted to make. The time of the visitation is also the day of visitation. Yes? No, I'm green. Okay. Terrible blindness, strange infatuation. 
My question is, is so then the time of our visitation in light of Ezekiel 1 is 30 years ago? Because we know that the time of their visitation was they rejected Jesus. When is the time of our visitation? That's what I'm asking. I'm asking you. Oh. I don't know. I'm thinking that has to be... The okay, next quote. That time of the end. Okay, so back to Great Controversy 314, 315. There is no evidence that Christ expected or no preparation for the Prince of, uh, is expected and no preparation for the Prince of Life. In amazement, the celestial messenger is about to return to heaven with the shameful tidings when he discovers a group of shepherds who are watching their flocks by night and, as they gaze into the starry heavens, are contemplating the prophecy of the Messiah to come to earth and longing for the advent of the world's Redeemer. Next paragraph. Oh, what a lesson is the wonderful story of Bethlehem. How it rebukes our unbelief our pride and self-sufficiently, how it warns us to beware, lest by our criminal indifference we also fail to discern the signs of the time and therefore not know the day of our visitation. When does the day of our visitation begin? At the birth in Bethlehem in 1989. Our visitation goes f from from 1989, from 1989, until when? November 9th. July, why is it July 18th? You're correct in my mind, but you've got to explain why. Because when, we look, because when we look at their visitation, their ending was the 70 AD, the destruction. The destruction of Jerusalem. So because of that, that tells us it's July 18th, the destruction of this, yeah. So this would be July 18th. And the stoning of Stephen would be November 9th. And back here in 1989, this is our day of visitation as priests. Right? And we, and we need to be ready for this, back in 1989, the birth of Christ. Now, what were you saying about the stoning of Stephen? Because we know that we have that one week of Christ in there, so maybe I'm wrong, the stoning of Stephen would be that. I don't know. That, th that's kind of a tricky one. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to mess it up. Because you got the cross, which you would want. No, it, it, 80, 34, technically, could be July 18th. But God in His mercy allowed 40 years so that the children uh, who had not been confronted with the message had an opportunity to hear the message. So he, in his mercy, extended that period. But the period, if you're going to just have it technical, go, would go from his birth to 34 AD, right? Yeah. But because of his mercy, we can also extend it out to the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70. But 8070 is the same as 8034. Why? We've been over this before. Maybe it hasn't clicked yet. Okay. Here's Christ's birth. He's going to confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in 8034... This is, their time of visitation is over with the stoning of Stephen. Okay, so what's the conclusion? Wait, no. No, 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 no. Let me, uh, the conclusion of this day of visitation. This is the day of visitation right here. Okay. What's the conclusion of it? It's a week. Yeah. Yeah. Now, but in his mercy, he's going to take it out to 80, 70. But what happens in 63? No, that's, is the, does the besieging start in 63? No. No, what starts in 63? There is a message sent. 
There's a guy that goes around the streets saying tidings out of the east, tidings out of the north. I forget this, what all the words this strange being says, but for one week they have a warning message. So for one week they have a warning message. A voice from the east. A voice from the west. A voice from the four winds. A voice against a Jerusalem. A voice... Yeah, oh, woe unto the inhabitants thereof. That's what the quote is. Okay, so when it, he extends in his mercy the time period, but the children, they're going to get confronted with a week at the end, a week's warning, just like the parents were, and of course they don't respond really either. Um, but what I want you to see, and if you give me the time here, it would be nice to get to that, is this is the, the whole time of visitation here. But you can also mark this as the time of visitation in a more specific sense. The week. And, and we should understand that from what we understand about Christ illustrating the end from the beginning. Yeah, okay. His, his people during that time. Yeah, so but what I'm saying is this is a fractal of this. And I mean you could even take it out to the 490 years and say that this is a fractal of the 490, and this is... 63 is a fractal of the 126, which is a, you know, just 63 all by itself, and that guy comes for one week. That's just... Okay, so what I'm wanting, to, wanting you to see now, if you go back to page 2 of your notes, is that here, what's a day? in Bible prophecy. A year. From 4 BC to 34 AD was a glorious manifestation of the power of God. True. But from 27 AD to 34 was an also a glorious manifestation of the power of God. Okay, this is the day of their visitation. But a day is a year. This is 1533 prophetically, symbolically, this whole history. But the Advent movement of 1840 to 1844 was a glorious manifestation of the power of God. This is 1840, the baptism, the angel comes down. This is 1844, at that level, right? So this is 1533 too. Yes? Okay, so our history from 1989 until July 18th is 1533. But down here at the end, we're going to have the fractal part of this history. And I, I, I'm not willing to say it's this yet, but it's hard not to say it. That from right here, on January 14th, 2017. Why are we marking that? That's where Paneum is presented. This is Paneum. It would be nicer if it would have ended right there. But it ends over here. But what does it do? I get it now. What does it do? What what? I get it. I get it. All right. I get it. Okay. This is the 1533 at the end. All right, but here at the end, the message on January 14th was the opening up of Paneum. Lots of, lots of things. That's the second witness for Palmoni, okay? It's the, the war between light and darkness, the god Pan. Um, it's pantheism. It's the prediction of panic and the pandemic that we're now in. Okay, and it, it goes through history till we get down here, and here we're in a time period where there is a chiastic structure that begins on November 9th, goes 250 days to Paneum, and then goes 252 days to March 27th, ending this other chiastic structure. So this chiastic structure, what's the center of it? Paneum, 718. And it concludes 
this chiastic structure concludes here at the end of this 1,533 days. This, this, we're working this out as we go along and we're over time. It's all about Panion. It's, it's all about Panion? That, that's what it's showing. It's just what is, reiterating it again and again. This is March, this center point here, March 27th, 2020, the center point of this chiasm. Um, how many days in this chias chiastic structure? S 731. And 731 is what? It's July 31st in the Julian, but what is it in the Gregorian? 718, July 18th. So this chiastic structure, it's about July 18th. It's about Paneum. What's Paneum? It's the midnight cry. Isn't it? It's the beginning of the image of the beast test. It's the beginning of the dictatorship, martial law, civil war. It's the beginning of the ensign being lifted up. Beginning of the ensign being lifted up. And before we get there, the Lord is calling the few honest hearts in Adventism to prayer. Serious prayer. It's serious for everyone right now that you're getting locked in your houses. Okay, so, so he's now getting them in the mindset where they can begin to think about spiritual things. And the message is July 18th, and it's all coming together. It, it, it's, that isn't, I wanted to show this. <laughs> this is just going along with it. We'll, we'll have to spend some time on this, further time, and, and clarify it. Anyone have any comments about this before we close out? Questions? What kind of questions? Like, Positive questions? Oh well, yeah, just how to, how to get it, how to lay it out, where you can understand the meaning of the chiasms and the... I, well, that's this... That's a lot of information. That's a lot of information, and we just, see, we just got this two days ago, this, yeah. this here. But over here, I just want us to see, so I don't lose my focus is that 1533 is a glorious manifestation of the power of God, and it's also a third, and there's going to be a glorious manifestation of the power of God that brings in the priests, one that brings in the Levites, and one that brings in the Nethanims. That's one-third, one-third, one-third. And that when you look at the, the history of Christ, you can show that this time of visitation is the day of visitation, and it's the period of time from the time of the end until the door closes. But it's also a special period of time at the end, a fractal of that entire period. And you can demonstrate that both of these would be represented by 1533. And we haven't even touched on 1533 addressing the third and the sixth and the ninth hour. And what's the third and the sixth and the ninth hour? Three, three, three. Third, third, third. But yeah, it's Christ's crucifixion. So you're saying those one third, one third, one third is is the fifteen thirty three equal to three three three? Is that yes. what you're saying? Yeah, and if you have three and you add three to it, what do you get? Six. Six. And if you add three to it, what nine. do you get? Nine. And that's what takes place between nine eleven and the eleventh hour workers. Nine with your third parts. I wonder how that's going to play into it. Do you know how they go and they, they slay the third part of man, the thirds of the sea. There's lots of thirds there too. Lots of thirds. The one that I intend to get to is in Daniel 11. You have the beast, the dragon, the beast, the false prophet. And those are three kingdoms that make one kingdom, but they're contrasted with the kingdom of the 144,000. And who's Who's in the kingdom of the 144,000? I'm not I'm emphasizing who makes it up, but it's divided into three. Priests, Levites, and Ethanims. Three, the thirds are amazing. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we, we wish to understand this light immediately in terms of having opportunity to give a fair warning to those that are needing to hear. We ask that you continue to open the light up Give us the discernment to recognize it and put it in the right position. We thank you for the, the avenues that you're using to bring this light to the forefront. 
Um, we pray for the work around planet Earth that even though it has a restriction placed upon it at this time, uh, that it wasn't a restriction that you didn't know about in advance and that you would continue to move this message and this work forward to glorify and honor yourself and bring many souls to the foot of the cross. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.